Hey everybody, it's Jesse, and uh, I hope everyone had a good weekend. Today I am streaming at home from my basement, so uh, the quality might not be as good as it has been. Uh, so I'm hoping to get 480, uh, 480p quality, and that's about as good as I can get. Uh, I've tried to get better quality before, but it ends up just buffering a lot for everyone, so uh, this is it for now. And uh, not much I can do about it. I already have the best internet I can buy at this location, uh, so unless I move, I'm stuck with it. Uh, the internet at my office was down today. Uh, then they got it working, but it was on and off, so I decided not to risk it, and I would just work from home. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so, see in the live chat, Nathaniel says you can get Google Fiber, uh, pay them a million dollars. <laughs> For like a half a second, I was like, wait, I can get Google Fiber? Uh, and then I saw the next comment. So <laughs> let me know if you all can hear me. I have a little bit of a different setup. Uh, usually I have a um, like an external mic, and I don't. Uh, that's a, at the office. Uh, so I'm just using the mic that's in my MacBook, and my laptop is actually on my lap. So I don't even know where the mic is in this thing. I just hope I'm not covering it up accidentally. But uh, if you have trouble hearing me, let me know. Uh, first, I want to go over what I've done uh, since I did the last stream. So basically what I've done this morning. And i also go over a pull request that I got. And then we'll get started. Okay, cool. So sounds like everyone can hear me. Uh, so good. That was all I was worried about. Uh, there's since I'm in the basement my air conditioner is down here so I hope you can't hear it in the background it doesn't sound too bad right now but let me know alright so enough with the sound let me uh, let me show you <laughs> let me show you what's been done so I added show the package JSON first uh, make this a bit bigger alright so we already had this first three, but I've added React Router and I'll show you how I set up the router uh, in a minute. But then I also added uh, a uh, pre-commit hook. So I pulled this over from our last project and I think I think it was uh, Vinay who had the pull request in the last project that we did that set up prettier and um, standard JS and it just enforced the style rules so I wanted to set this up early on so that if you all uh, want to submit a pull request you know all the code will all be in the same same format all the time so that's set up now and um, let's see what else alright just a little bit uh, to configure uh, standard JS these are all the packages so I added them as dev dependencies so Babel ESLint, Husky, Lint Staged, Prettier and Standard uh, so if you're not familiar with that basically all it does is every time I go to commit so I do a git commit uh, it checks all of my JavaScript and it formats it automatically so I have it set to use single quotes and no semicolons so um, and then all the the normal standard JS rules so you can check out standard JS and see what those rules are if you're interested um, so standard JS is the set of rules prettier is the thing that actually applies those rules to the code to format uh, the code and tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure what Husky is. Like I said, Vinay is the one that submitted this pull request the last time, so I know it works, <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure how it works. But I'm not worried about that because, I mean, really, like, look at these node modules. 
I don't know how most of these things work, <laughs> but they work. And that's how pretty much everybody's projects are nowadays. Okay, so that's it for the package JSON. Um, let me show you how I set up the router. So I imported browser router, route, and link from React Router DOM. And uh, for, so for React Router, when you bring it in, you have to bring in DOM because there's also React Router, you know, for other things like for native and different things. So uh, make sure to remember the DOM. I'm not even sure if there is a React Router package. Um, I never really checked. So you pull that in. I wrap everything in this browser router. And then within it, I can make links like this. So here's my, my side drawer menu now and instead of normal like a tags I have these link tags and instead of an href I say two and then I just put the route and then I've made some routes down here just to, to kind of make sure it's working and give me an idea and everyone an idea of these are all the views that we need to make so each one of these routes is is a different view so the home view right now, every route right now just has an H1. Uh, but when you click on this route, it'll render whatever you have inside the render function for the route. So eventually, it's going to render one of these views. So I made pages for each view. And it might be hard to see there on the side. Um, but for each view, I've made a separate component and I put it in a views folder. So each one of these routes will render that view. And then everything for each view will go into that component. So it'll be separated out pretty nicely. We reuse for every view the same title bar and the same drawer, uh, side drawer with the links here. So this is outside of all the routes. And that's pretty cool. So that means the entire page pretty much never has to re-render and refresh because you know this, is, this app bar is going to stay the same uh, throughout all of it. Okay, so that's it for what I've done. Let me show you what um, what Sebastian uh, did with his pull request. Okay, I see in the live chat it says uh, Maxime says you can auto format the code on save. Uh, with ESLint and VS Code, yeah, I have I actually have something that's auto formatting things for me, like as I type. Uh, but the thing with this is it um, it enforces it across for everyone. So anyone who um, who clones this repo, it will enforce the same style rules for them, uh, and they don't have to, regardless of how they have their editor set up. Uh, so. Yeah, also I'm not using Visual Studio Code for this project, so I'm using Atom. Uh, I have another project where I'm using Visual Studio Code, but I'm sure th there's a plugin for Atom as well. Um, but anyway, in, in this case, I don't have to worry about plugins or anything. I could load this in any editor, um, and regardless of how I loaded it, uh, it's still going to format properly. Like... I could open it up in Nano on a server and change something, and as long as I commit it, it's still going to format properly. I would probably never edit any files on a server in Nano, but <laughs> I might have, to, unless I was setting up the server initially. Um, all right, so let me pull over on my other screen. I'm trying to find the uh, the pull request. I don't know why this is not right at the top of oh my there we go resource center okay uh, let's go to pull request and I'll bring this over now you all can see you can check this out if you want to check it out in more depth. I'm just going to go over it really briefly. Just want to give credit uh, to Sebastian for doing this. 
and oh, this is weird. That's kind of why is it doing that? Anyway, <laughs> I wanted it to uh, um, get bigger, but it just got taller. I wanted it to take up the full screen. Uh, so anyway, I want to give credit to Sebastian for um, making this pull request. So you can see, uh, you know, what he says about it here. Uh, so it's proper theme. If you remember last time, we were talking about the theme and um, how we, we had kind of gone through and figured out how to customize the theme, but I never hooked up. I made like a separate file for the theme, but then I ended up just testing it out right in the uh, index.js file uh, with an object there instead of linking up the separate file, which would have been the better way to do it. So Sebastian went ahead and linked everything up. So you can kind of see a lot of the, you know, what's going on here. So he imports FUS theme. That's the file, you know, that we had made. Uh, so he imports that. And then for this theme here, he says, get, get MUI theme. And then he brings in that FUS theme here. Okay, so really helpful uh, to be able to kind of, you know, do all this so that we can start up now and you know just get right to it uh and not have to worry about setting this this up and let's see dot test and all right so this is the file this is the uh theme file you can see here and then in index uh he's removed you know all the stuff that we had in here and i think it was uh patrick had the idea to make leave the index file as clean as possible and uh to to wrap inside the app component to wrap everything instead of wrapping it here like we had done so it's clean and i, I took that same idea and with in terms of the router and i wrapped browser router around the app component in the app file uh not not in um in the index okay so thanks again sebastian i really appreciate that and now let me show you there's really not much that happened in terms of like visually what you can see uh but i'll show you anyway you can see I still have not filled out my Trello board. But I want to bring over the site. And I'm just running it on localhost. So I can just pull it up right here. Okay. So here it is. But now, So now we have our home view. And you can see here I uh, have these great default link styles. But I can click on it, and you see it changed, and the URL changed, and now we're at the poster view. So obviously, you notice we need to do something to make this app drawer automatically close, because that's not really the expected behavior uh, when you when you click. Normally, you want it to close on click. So I'm I'm actually somewhat surprised that that's not the default. Um, so we're gonna I'm gonna check out the documentation for Material UI and see how to do that uh, and then we can get into I guess we'll probably start out with the home view and start building that out so let me check I'm just gonna scroll through the live chat briefly just to uh, say hi see if there's any any new people in here it looks like there's some some people I haven't seen before so hi and welcome Uh, all right, so uh, Patrick says, 
didn't you say you were working with your laptop on on your lap how do you have multiple screens in the configuration so uh yeah i just have um i have my my recliner scooted up as close as possible to a table that's set up like pretty high so that the recliner can actually go underneath it uh so it's scooted up pretty close and i have pretty decently long cables so i have um you know my laptop and then two monitors connected to it right now. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's an odd setup. I when I was freelancing, I used to work like this all the time. Um, so it's a little weird for me to get used to it from being at like a normal desk and a normal desk chair. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of getting used to it. It's not too bad. <laughs> no. So anyway, that's how I have my setup. If you want to see my setup, I um I put it on Instagram earlier, uh, just to kind of show the the weirdness of of my setup. So it's the last thing I posted. If anyone's anyone's interested, uh, and usually when I work from home, I I don't work in the basement, but uh, my kids are home and they had friends over, and so they're any they're upstairs and I'm downstairs. Otherwise. Uh, it would be way too noisy to do anything. All right, so first I do want to I want to fix. We'll probably, let's fix two things. Let's make it close on click, and then let's style these links a bit because we we obviously don't want to keep the links like this. So I'm actually even wondering if there's some sort of link component in Material UI that I just wasn't using. Uh, so we'll see. So I'm going to check out, I have the Material UI docs open, I think, already. I think I had them open on my other screen. Yep, I did. All right. Oh, actually, we, we did discuss going back to Material UI, um, the alpha version. And I haven't done that yet, uh, and I think some of you had said that you can um, basically pull components from the new version and use them with the old version. So that's probably what I'll end up doing instead of you know entirely going over to the new version. That should help keep things, I think, a bit more stable. Hopefully, I'm I'm. I'm hoping that we can get the best of both worlds and have the stability of, you know, the older version, but then be able to grab some of the components that we want from the new version. So hopefully it works out like that. If it doesn't, then we might just switch to the alpha version. We'll, we'll see when we get there, which will be soon, because uh, we'll need to use, I do want to use those columns uh, that are in the newer version. All right, so... On my other screen, I'm just looking at the documentation for Material UI. And I'm assuming that there's just some option that needs to be set to true or false to uh, close it on, on click. Hmm. All right, if you draw with the dynamics. Oh, okay. I th think I know what's going on. Let me see. Oh no, that's it. I did have that set. I thought for a second I had this set incorrectly, but I don't. Actually, I do want to see. 
I had wondered if uh, it might be better to have the sidebar open all the time. But I'm not sure. That's not really what people are used to right now from the old, uh, the older version of, of this that we're making. Uh, so I have to think about it. Either way, it still needs to close on click because on a smaller screen, it obviously wouldn't stay open. So we still need to figure that out. Okay, so let me stay open on request change. Okay, so what am I doing here on this on request change? I'm guessing that maybe this is open state of results request to be changed. Yeah, maybe this is the problem. Let me check. I want to check the live chat quickly just to see if any of you have um, given some sort of answer. It's possible that you know some of you may have uh, already used Material UI and have gone through the same thing and know the answer. Oh, Rohan. Uh, Rohan is a regular here in the live chat, and uh, he's not feeling well today. So, sorry about that. I hope you feel better. And uh, get some sleep, because I know, what, it's probably midnight in India right now. So, yeah, get some sleep and get better. Okay, we have to say hello from Vienna, Austria. Hey, thanks for joining from Austria. Actually, the university that I work at has a remote campus in Austria, in um, in Gaming. So, I'm not exactly sure how that how far Gaming is from Vienna. I've never been to the other campus, but uh, that would be cool. I can't I can't think of any reason why they would need to send me to the campus since I can work from anywhere. <laughs> But if I can think of a reason, I'm going to try to uh, to get a trip to Austria for work. All right. Maud said, hi uh, from India, and you're a good teacher. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. So All right. Patrick says um haven't used the library but you can define a click handler function that set state to to closed uh and add that to the links. Um yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking is just have that click. I w I was just wondering there has to be some built-in way of doing this because this is not, it's not like some weird thing we're trying to do. This is normal behavior. So, um, and I, I kind of would like to check it out. Let's see the docked example undocked. Let me see the undocked example. Uh, so if you want to follow along, it's uh, material hyphen ui.com. And I'm checking out the uh, documentation on the drawer. I'm not putting it on my other screen because since the uh, the video quality is is lower today, uh, there's probably not <laughs> there's not really much of a chance that it's going to be legible for most people. So I'm just going to leave the code up on the screen uh, and then do like kind of the research part on the other screen. If it's something really important that I think you all would like to see, I will we'll pull it over. All right, so right now I'm looking at their example code just to see on tap touch this handle tab. okay All 
I think I found it. No, did I know? Hmm. Okay, I found it. Patrick, you were actually uh, on the right track completely. So basically your idea of adding um, a click handler to the links was exactly how they handle that. Uh, so it's it's nothing that I put on the drawer, but on these menu items, that's where I need to put the click handler. So I'm going to go through and just select all of these and add this on touch tap, this handle close. All right, so now Let's go check this out. Hmm. Is it not? Hmm. All right. Well, that's how it was. Let me double check that I did that correctly. All right. It is supposed to be on the menu item. On touch tab. Was, um, I wonder, oh, okay, I see. I forgot some other stuff as well. I need to actually add in handle close. Because what's the point in calling a function if you didn't define the function in the first place? All right, so this is what I was missing. So obviously, if you didn't catch my mistake, I was calling this handle close, but there was no handle close function. So here it is now. So now it should work. All right, awesome. Well, that one wasn't so awesome, because it didn't. Oh, OK. All right, I don't know if you noticed this. So the behavior that I'm getting now is that the it only is a link if I actually click the link. It, it's only doing the routing. If I click over here, it still shuts it, but it doesn't route. So we need to fix that. And probably what we need to do is wrap this entire menu item in a link so let's try to wrap that I'm just gonna try the first one just to see if it works whoops keep going the wrong way uh -oh. oh I see didn't didn't get it all the first time okay All right, let's try this now. So we'll, we'll go, we'll go to posters first, and then I'll come back and click on the side. There we go. All right, that works now. So we need to change all these, which it's kind of a pain, but um, not really. Let's see if I can change it all at once. All right, that makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> well, let's try this. Yeah, this is going to be the tough part because they're all different lengths. Oh, well. Helped a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> 
I don't know. Does anybody else uh, ever play around with the multiple cursor thing? And sometimes you just have weird things happen. L I N K. Uh, occasionally that happens to me where I, I'm not exactly sure if it'll work, so I just try it anyway, and it ends up just pasting stuff like every. It just totally like it like just happened, right? It. I, it didn't work because these were different lengths, so I couldn't copy the way I wanted to. And then when I tried to copy one of them, it copied all the lengths. So not really a big deal. All in all, multiple cursors is way more helpful uh, than than it is, uh, you know, kind of a waste of time at times when it doesn't work. All right, so let me do these few things. I know this is a bit boring, but it'll be over in about 10 seconds or so. Now, I think I have a few uh, Vim users that, that watch as well, so I'm sure there's probably some super like magic Vim stuff that could have done that a lot faster, because although I don't use Vim, when I see people use it, I'm always amazed at what can be done. But uh, now these should work, so we'll give it a test just to make sure we did it correctly. Posters, share story, awesome. Okay, so that works great. Um, so I'll leave that up so you can see what I was doing in case it was too fast. And what were we trying? It was trying to have things styled a bit better yeah so basically I was surprised when I saw the default link style here because I had assumed obviously that links would go here so that the default would have been to override you know this link style this normal link style but it wasn't so I'm thinking maybe I needed to add something into the markup that was already built in to Material UI. Uh, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll try it out. If worse comes to worse, we could always just add our own styles. It's not really a big deal. So I'm not really seeing anything that stands out in the documentation. I don't want to spend a ton of time digging into it. Uh, the examples for the drawers aren't showing anything. So they just have the regular menu items, which is, you know, where we got this these examples from. Okay. What potentially what could be happening as well, and I didn't double check this, but it's possible. Um, on the last project I did, when I was using the style JSX tag, I noticed that at times, depending on you know how I brought things in, the styles within that tag never got applied. So potentially, because this is a link tag and not an A tag. Uh, at some point along the line, uh, the styles try to get applied and, and can't find the A tags. That's basically what was happening before. Uh, so I don't know how the styles are, you know, for these, you know, like, for instance, for the menu item. Um, so maybe, actually, I wonder if they have... looking to see if they had uh, the menu item component in here but I don't see it let's see yeah they have some menus but it's uh, like drop-down menus let's see they do use menu item
but again, I'm not seeing anything anything in here that's um, that has a link on it. Oh well. At the very least, uh, let's just get rid of these underlines so we don't have to look at them anymore. So, where's... Actually, let me see. There's some, uh, some stuff here in the live chat. Let me check it out. Uh, Sabo says, hi from Hungary. How's it going? Thanks for watching. Hey, Zanna, how's it going? Glad you can join us. Uh, Zana asks, what's with the blur? I'm assuming you're talking about the video quality. Yeah, it's because I'm at home. My internet's not as good as at work. So tomorrow I'll be back at work, so it'll be uh, good quality again tomorrow. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, Patrick has some uh, advice about our issue right now with the the menu items and styling. So says so we could do uh, menu item. Uh, primary text and then within primary text put put what we want the text to be so let me let me try that out then all right and then in that case Actually, if this works, I like this a lot better because then I don't even need that closing tag. And that'll just look cleaner in general. Alright, so we did that for logos. Let's see how, how it looks. Hmm. Still giving us that styling. Let me do a refresh just to be sure. Yeah, it's still giving us that styling. Hmm. Oh, actually, I just, so I finally found where the menu item properties are in the documentation. So they're on the same page as the regular menus. So on the, on that sidebar in material UI, underneath the menu selection, if you scroll to the bottom, they're there. So let me check that out. All right, I mean, I could just put a style tag in there. It's not really, let's see. Yeah, I don't think it has anything. Yeah, a few people are asking about the uh, stream quality in live chat. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, my internet's bad today.
Okay, Sebastian says you can use nav link instead of link so you can add an active class when you are on that routing. Sebastian, does so is nav link can I use that with uh React Router then? All right, so let's I want to see I actually want to see how this gets rendered. Okay, I'm going to pull this over on the other screen here so you all can see. Oh, actually, I almost forgot this. I, I don't want to actually I don't I don't really want to try it on my network right now. I'm afraid it'll make it even worse, but uh so some of you may remember at one point I tried to use uh Ngrok I, th I don't really know how you say it, but it's N-G-R-O-K. Okay. Uh, so that you all could check out the site while I'm, uh, while I'm developing. And we used it, and it worked for like five seconds. And then uh, everybody tried to access the site, and I hit the, uh, the limits um, for the free plan. Well, at some point, um, another um, streamer... I forget exactly how it came up, but I told another streamer about what happened with Ngrok on uh, Twitter, and I guess the guy who maintains Ngrok or you know made it saw it on Twitter, responded, asked what the problem was. So I've been emailing back and forth with him, and now I have basically it'll work. I'll have I'll have enough. Um, you know, request. I don't know what level I'm at now, but basically, it should work for the stream. It should be able to handle all the requests. And um, so, I didn't have time to set that up this morning, so I'll try to get everything set up um, tomorrow. Because I would, I, I don't even have uh, Ngrok uh, installed on this computer. It's I have it on my work computer. But anyway, I'll get it working tomorrow, and that should be cool because then everybody can can view I think Fabian was the one that had that idea which it was a really good idea and um, anyway so that'll be uh, tomorrow all right okay so Sebastian saying if I use nav link And so let me let me see again. If I use navlink, then I can add an active class when you're on that routing. Okay, cool. That won't be hard to switch. Navlink. Okay, I'm just going to check this just to make sure it still works. Yep, still works. Awesome. And then, last name. So I can do, so Sebastian's uh, copying some stuff over into the, um, into the live chat for me to try out. All 
actually. <laughs> uh, which one did I put that on? Was it logos? Yeah, okay. So I should have the class active on there now. Let's see. Yep, class active. Okay, so anyway, this is... At one point I was trying to show you all how this is getting rendered. Uh, and I, I think I got sidetracked, so... We have... Let's see, the div... Okay, so this is the div that all the links are in. So it all shows up. Hmm. That's odd. Okay, for some reason, home has active <laughs> and logos have active. I'm not really sure why that happened. But anyway, what I wanted to see was these styles to see that, like, yes, this is the default, and we don't want that. Okay, let's, um, all right, so here's, here's what I haven't done yet in React, and uh, maybe uh, some of you have done this, uh, can give me some advice here, because I know this is possible. So, what I'd like to do is just have some standard CSS uh, for links. So, I'm not always going to use the link tag. So, I don't want it to be on a specific component, but just any time that a link is used. So, normally, we'd put this in this app CSS, which should probably be okay in this case because we could have links anywhere. But, I know that you can break up CSS and have it apply just to different components. So, I suppose I don't have to know it right now, but it would be cool to know the best way to do that. Okay, uh, Dead Zombie uh, says, Fir first time here. Uh, hi, Jesse. I, I assume it says, I, I love your stream. But it, uh, anyway, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for watching. And uh, again, sorry about the quality. I probably won't do as long of a stream uh, just so that people who are watching now and watch the recording later don't have to suffer through too long of <laughs> the stream. I like am seriously thinking about moving just so that I can get better internet because <laughs> this is terrible. I, if I ever went back to freelance, I might move or like rent an office somewhere or something because um, this is bad. Okay, so let's just put some styling for an A tag here. Just to make sure... I mean, it looks like there's there's nothing that would be overriding anything, so we should be fine to put the A tag styling here. Uh, I'm kidding. Like, yeah. Yeah, this is all... basic okay Patrick says remove dead CSS while while I'm there good idea all right so what am I not using pretty much none of this right yeah
Okay, cool. Text decoration and color. Was the color off? I can't even remember. Yeah, we want to. Uh, for now. I'll just go black for now. Probably change it at some point. Okay, cool. We might have to do... Alright, awesome. I do want to see... Okay, cool. All right, so at least we got rid of the annoying underlines. And all these work, and you can even click on the side, and it still works. So this is now operating like you would normally expect uh, this side navigation drawer to operate. Cool. All right. I think this would be a good time to commit <laughs> these changes. So let me commit that. I have, I'm gonna pull over my my terminal because I imagine there are some people watching that aren't familiar with the terminal so it's good I kinda like to just show when I do this stuff and try to make it as big as possible there we go okay so um, if you aren't familiar with terminal yours might not look like this uh, there's some custom things going on here with the colors uh, but basically the commands are all the same so I'm gonna use get status just to see what we've changed we've changed app uh, dot CSS and app dot JS so now we're gonna do a git commit and I'm gonna just do an am and that means we're gonna add the files uh, while we're committing them and we're gonna add a message as well right here uh, in the command so the message is going to be um, probably just pretty much style drawer links. That's pretty much what we did. I mean, I know we uh, we fixed the click thing too. Um, D W it. There. We go. Hang it. I can't type today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Drawer links. <laughs> that was terrible. Took me like four tries to spell drawer. All right, cool. So you noticed we had it was taking a little bit of time. That was all that stuff that we added with prettier. Um, you know, see Husky was, was running there, so it was checking our files and changing. So if we go back to our files, they're most likely a bit different uh, than how we left them. So I don't remember exactly how we left them, but if we would have been really lazy with our formatting, it wouldn't have mattered because as soon as we commit, everything gets formatted correctly uh, according to whatever we set as our style rules, which we're just using pretty much standard JS. Uh, I, I'm not even sure that we altered it at all. Okay. Did I push that? 
uh, and let me so I'm gonna do a git push and this is gonna make sure the code goes to our repository on github and it's important to remember to do a git push because if somebody else is working on the project they won't know about your changes unless you push them or if you go to work on it from a different computer you won't ha be able to get those changes unless you've pushed them up which I frequently work from two different computers so I pretty much I normally just push every time I commit it's not I mean, it's not 100 percent necessary but that way I, I usually don't forget and we're pushing uh, the master branch right to into the master branch so that's why we have master otherwise whatever our branch name was that we wanted to push to we would put it here instead of master and now our changes are up on on github and if you don't believe me you can check the repo <laughs> the links in the description all right so let's check here again and let's see whatever the next thing is we're gonna do um, I guess we can work on the home view since this is functional and doesn't look terrible uh, and you remember our home view is just gonna have uh, six six cards uh, excuse me I was yawning uh, six material design cards uh, and basically on a, on a large screen it'll be three and three and then it'll scale down uh, like two 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 and then all in a row on a very small screen like on a phone um, and that's it that's pretty much all we had on the home screen before that's probably how we're gonna keep it so we need to have some column classes and this is where I wanted to try to pull in the component from uh, the newest version of Material UI, which we're not using right now. So let me. Oops, I had uh, I hadn't I hadn't checked the um, live chat in a while. Now I see uh, Sebastian was was telling me to add in exact. Did I not have exact anymore? Let's see. Exact to the home routing. So you're saying I need to add, so, uh, Sebastian had said I need to add exact to uh, the home routing. So I'm assuming this is what you're talking about, exact. So why, um, I'm not super familiar with React Router. I actually just learned about it a few weeks ago from the React course I was taking. I'm still taking it. Uh, so I was using it on my first project for that course, so that's why I decided to use it for this project. The two projects are actually pretty similar in terms of the setup. They're both using Create React App and React Router. I set them both up with Prettier and Standard JS. Okay, so um, I guess that was the right spot. So Sebastian, why would what what does Exact do on when I add it there uh, to the um, to the nav link? I'm assuming now that that will solve the problem we had of home getting the active class as well. I guess not. Let me do a refresh. Double check. Hmm. Oh, actually, it should have it there because we're on the home view. Let me take. Let me change that. Okay. Cool. So that's what it fixed then, right? 
Okay, so um, basically, uh, what I'm I'm saying basically what Sebastian's saying in the live chat, so you all know what's going on. If you're watching this later on, uh, if if you don't put exact here, then it'll try to match and put this uh, this active class um, on whatever matches so since we had a slash in the URL technically that matches this so by adding exact we're saying well it has to be just slash and nothing else and so it it would have matched anything any of these links so that's why we did that and actually I've done that down here on the routes I just I didn't realize that you could also do it on the links And actually, so I'll probably need then to put that active class thing on everything. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Timmy says, hey, have you shared the Trello to-dos yet? Actually, no, I haven't shared that or put the link anywhere just because I haven't put in any to-dos. So I've been slacking on that. Uh, I had thought about doing it this morning, but instead I just started working on it. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna need to put them on there soon. Otherwise, uh, I'll start forgetting things and being a lot less organized so usually at the beginning of a project I, f I frequently just start working on it without doing all the to do's and then once I get into it a little bit it's a lot easier for me to see all the steps you know and think about all the steps but right off the bat it's um, I don't know why but I find it hard to break down everything uh, it's just hard to think through all the steps when you're not seeing anything at all on the screen uh, in terms of your project, how it looks, or the code. Uh, but probably th this week I'll need to lay out some steps here. Okay, let's see. Should we add? Oh. I'm sorry, I'm yawning again. I didn't. Uh, I didn't have any caffeine today at all, uh, which is which is rare. I've been used to having. Uh, either espresso in the morning uh, or G Fuel in the afternoon or sometimes both depending on how much sleep I got. So um, uh, I should have had caffeine before the stream. Uh, let me check the time here. Oh, okay. Let me... Um, I want to go to the live chat. I totally forgot to do my, um, my normal Pomodoro uh, stuff. So... I never really went back to the chat to check for questions, and uh, it's been an hour, over an hour, and I try to check every 25 minutes. So I'm going to go back to the chat. I, uh, I'm thinking that I may, I may wrap up the, uh, the video because basically we're at a point where we've accomplished like a chunk of work, and that chunk was, you know, basically get the navigation drawer to a point where we want. The only other thing I could think of doing right now is maybe adding that active style, but I'm not 100% sure how I even want that to look right now. So I think maybe this will be the end of the coding portion. And then um, I'll do all the questions and everything. I'd like to wrap things up by maybe 3.30. So I'm. it doesn't look like there's a lot of questions, so I think that's definitely doable. But I have to take my son to his karate class uh, in about an hour or so. Uh, so I'd like to be able to eat dinner before I do that. <laughs> and um, 
I haven't. He hasn't been to his class in like a month, and some of that was us being on vacation and doing things on during his time. But at least once it was due to me getting home from work a little bit late. So I don't want to make him miss the class again. Uh, all right. So if you were just here for the code portion of it, thank you so much for watching. You can safely uh, quit watching now if you don't want to be around for the uh, Q and A. If you have some questions or you'd like to stick around to help answer questions or you know hear the answers, then uh, feel free to stick around. So if you have a question right now that you'd like for me to answer or anybody else in the chat to answer, uh, put it in the live chat. Uh, or if you can't stick around, you can still put your question in the comments of this video. Or you can um, message me on Twitter or any other social media stuff that, that I'm on. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And let me let me see uh, what's in the live chat. I think I covered all my normal uh, stuff that I say at the end of the stream. So I'm going to scroll all the way back to the top, make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm actually really surprised at how many viewers we still have because I know the quality's bad. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, so I'm 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 impressed that you all were able to stick with it. Oh, Nathaniel asked way at the beginning about uh, streaming on weekends. So yeah, I've never streamed on a weekend. I'm not entirely opposed to streaming on the weekends because I do work on. Well, occasionally I do work on things for my main job on the weekend if I have to. Uh, hopefully I won't have to do that again for a long time because I've, I've done quite a bit of it recently. Uh, but I work on, on other projects on the weekend. So I have my class, my Udacity React course that I'm doing projects for, which it would be cool to stream that. Although I wonder if I'm allowed to stream it since it's a paid course, if they want like their project on there or not. I guess it wouldn't be a big deal because... The paid stuff is really paying for somebody to grade the project and give me feedback. So I don't think it would be a big deal, but I'd have to double check. Uh, also, I have some other just fun side projects, so maybe I will stream on the weekend. Uh, my oldest son really wants me to make a video game, and he's already drawn everything that he wants me to do. And like crayon on big pieces of paper, he's drawn out the maps for like levels and uh, all the bad guys and the good guys and all the weapons so maybe i'll do that i think it'd be cool to uh try to make a game in react i think it would help me build up my react skills and be fun and uh then maybe my son would get interested more interested in what i do and that would be cool too he's only eight years old he just turned eight over the weekend so i don't really expect him to be that into coding Okay, as I'm scrolling through, I am I'm seeing like some more new people uh, that are joining. So uh, welcome. I appreciate you watching and joining in in the chat. Oh, I didn't notice this before. Nathaniel said earlier, I wish Trello lets you resize the columns. It triggers my OCD. I'm working on my own list app to get around that. Taking a bit of time to code, though. Oh, that's really cool. Um, if you get your app to the point where you'd like to share it, uh, I think that would be cool to, to see it. So send me uh, send me a link to, to the code or to a demo or something uh, if you get a chance. Okay, so Droid, uh, Droid PC Geek says, I'm a web dev, uh, but I mostly work with JavaScript and a little bit of Node.js because I program Discord bots for fun. That's really cool. Cool. Thanks, uh, thanks for sharing. Thanks for joining in. I'd like to get into to learn how to program bots, preferably in JavaScript, uh, since that's what I'm most familiar with.
Uh, Isaiah asks, how are you integrating material design with React? Uh, and then um, Maxime answers, with material UI, yeah, that's it. So with material UI, uh, Vishal says, nothing so much great about material UI. Um, Yeah, I, I have no um, particular, I have nothing really to say about Material UI yet because I don't feel that I've used it long enough to have uh, an, a really informed opinion about it. So after this project, I'm sure I'll, I'll know what I think about it. Uh, Sabo asks, do you include the CSS into JS file or call it with a separate reference? Let me bring up where I have that. So the um, the CSS currently is actually I, I have two CSS. So I have an index CSS file that gets included in the index and that's just this. All right, some basic stuff here. And then we have an app CSS file and that gets included up here uh, in the app file. So that's where we put the, the link. Um, really, I, I don't really know why there needs really to be two different files, to be honest with you. This is just how it came like automatically from create react app, uh, because I'm not, it's not like there's a separate component other than app. So like everything's flowing through app into index. So it probably could, everything could probably be in this index CSS if we really wanted it to apply everywhere. Maybe there is some like performance reason why you would want to split them up and not have a lot in here. I don't really know. But basically that's the way we're, we're importing them uh, at, you know, at the top of our uh, React components. And we could split it up as much as we want. So each component could have its own separate CSS file, uh, which may end up happening. Some components probably won't need their own CSS uh, if they're not really doing a lot uh, UI-wise. So uh, we'll see. But we may may end up having, having it uh, like that. Nathaniel says, if I stay up till 3 a.m. and then wake up at 8 a.m., I generally feel sick that day and can't code properly. Yeah. So I've done that before. Uh, actually, my uh, my kids wake up at night frequently, and the baby wakes up really early in the morning. So if I stay up late, the odds of me having to wake up at like 5 or 6 in the morning with the baby are pretty high. It seems like it always happens like that. If I go to sleep early, the baby sleeps in too. Uh, and then I get a lot of sleep, which is great. <laughs> but uh, if I stay up late, for some reason, I think the baby senses that and then wakes up at 5 o'clock in the morning and wants me. So <laughs> my solution to that is espresso and G Fuel. Those are the days when I have both. Uh, and then I can't fall asleep that night even though I'm exhausted. So does anybody else have trouble falling asleep? even though you're tired at night. That's been happening to me a lot lately. I know I'm tired. I know I should sleep, but I just can't sleep. I just, um, I don't know. Last night was okay. I was so exhausted. I was able to fall asleep, but it had been after days of not getting enough sleep. All right, so I'm just scrolling through the live chat a bit more. I'm about halfway through now. Uh, Nathaniel asks, what packages do you use on Atom? Um, I have a lot of packages. I'll bring up my, um, my settings right now and just let you see the packages. I'm not going to go through all of them. I did that once on a video. I can't remember what video it was, though. Uh, that's one of the video ideas that I have, like, you know, to do some pre-recorded short videos on my own channel. Uh, I have a list of ideas. A lot of them have come from you all, but one of them on the list is go through all my packages and how I set up uh, my my editor, how I set up Adam, and then 
maybe even how I set up Visual Studio Code as well. I don't have nearly as a much set up for Visual Studio Code, but I do have some. So anyway, this is, I'll make this a bit bigger. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I tried to con uh, command plus and make it bigger and it did not work. So I'll just scroll through this as I'm talking uh, and that way you can see a little bit of what I'm using. Some of these I, I don't ever really use. I know I've downloaded things before that I thought sounded cool and then didn't use them that much. Uh, Yosef says using dual screen is good for eye protection but they shouldn't be in the same dimension at least one should be closer than the other that's interesting I've never heard that um, that's cool I have to keep that in mind now that I think about it uh, I guess I do have them at different dimensions most of the time because of the way my desk is set up. So I wasn't doing that on purpose because I had no idea there was any advantage to doing that, but I'll have to remember that now. I used to have a four monitor setup and every monitor was at a different height and everyone was at a distant, different distance from me. And it wasn't on purpose. It was just I didn't have proper mounts for the monitors and they were all different sizes. Because I would just like grab monitors when I could get them like for free. If somebody was getting a new one, they'd just let me have their old one. And then I just had them standing on whatever I could find around the house to put them on. So it was an odd looking setup, but it worked. Uh, Mobbin said disable caching in Chrome DevTools just to be sure. I usually have caching disabled uh, every time DevTools is open uh, just by default. I find if, if you're a web developer, which you probably, I'm assuming most people watching this are, I recommend doing that because, I mean, if you're spending most of your time on the internet developing, you're going to have DevTools open and you're probably not going to want the cache to work because you want to change something and see what happens immediately. So I just leave it, leave the cache off when DevTools is open all the time. Because uh, I've never had a case where I wanted to cache a site that I was working on. I see. Nathaniel says, just get a DigitalOcean VPS and save it to it in real time. So this is when we were talking about using Ngrok. So. Uh, it says, pay them like $40 a month for high-end VPS and you'll never have a problem again. Yeah, I think I'll just go with Ngrok since uh, it's been generously given for free. <laughs> so, not, not really uh, excited to pay $40 a month if I don't have to. Oh, and Nathaniel says I can get 32 CPUs for 640 a month. That's more than I pay for my house payment. Oh, Mobbin says you can compress the stream. Uh, with Pied Piper. Oh, I've never heard about that. I'll have to look that up. Okay, Patrick says that he's gotten SAS working in the, his uh, latest React project. That's awesome. Uh, 
I actually I'd really like to know how how you got it working because I would love to use SAS as well for my projects. So um, if you get a chance, you know, send me a message or something, or let me know. Comment depending on how difficult it was. You could probably just comment on the video, and um, uh, that would that would be really awesome. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Umberto says that uh, he was yawning right before I did. Hope I didn't send it to you. Then again with the delay. Yeah, there is a delay on the stream, so maybe we yawned at the exact same time. Didn't even realize it. Uh, Daniel said, how did he do that super copy and paste? So, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing that you meant, like, my, um, my multiple cursors, so, let me demonstrate that, because that is a really cool thing to do. So, if you're using Atom, or pretty much every code editor has this, I don't know if the hotkeys are always the same to do it, but... Basically, I can highlight, so I'm going to highlight nav link here, and then I'm going to press on my, my Mac using Atom, I'm going to press Command, and then D, and I'm going to hold in Command, and every time I press D while still holding in Command, it highlights that same word, that, that same string that you have highlighted in the next spot that it appears in. And then you can edit it. So right now I'm just moving the arrow keys back and forth, and you'll edit everything. And if I were to paste whatever I last copied, it would paste in every position. If I were to highlight it and um, cut it, it would cut that out. So it's really, really handy. It's, it's kind of like if you don't have enough things that you really need to use find and replace, like it would be a pain to try to do a find and replace, then these multiple cursors make a lot of sense. Once you have... A lot of items then find and replace is probably the way to go and it's it's more powerful but especially like if all the items you need pretty much fit like within the screen so you can see what's going on uh, then that's that's when it's most useful so anyway I'm really glad you asked that question actually because if there was anyone out there anyone else out there that didn't know about it uh, really helpful I actually I heard about it first I saw it first on uh, Will Stern's uh, YouTube channel. It's um, Learn Code Academy, and uh, it was one of his videos. I think he was actually using Sublime Text when he did it. Uh, but I remember seeing him do that and thinking, like, what, what is this awesome thing? And uh, yeah, ever since then, I, I use it a lot. One, of, it's one of my favorite things. Uh, Sebastian asks, uh, quick quick update of what you've done so far. I saw you merge my, my uh, pull request. Yeah, so I, I did. I merged your pull request, and that was awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, basically, the only other things that I've done is I added in React Router. I added all these, you know, these links and uh, the routes down here that you see. And I didn't do all this during the, the, the stream. I did it beforehand. And then I, um, I added prettier... Uh, to auto format, so uh, with you know standard JS, so just like we had set up on the last project, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Hamza asks React Native, when is it coming? Is it coming? Yeah, React Native is coming. I can't say when though for sure. 
so I'm doing a course right now, and the last part of the course is, is about React Native. So uh, within a few months, I will have built something with React Native. And um, at that point, I would really like to try to build something for work for my main job with React Native. This project I'm working on right now might not be a bad candidate for that. So I may, maybe I'll come back to this project. I just don't really think I'll be able to learn enough about React Native to, to do this project with it, but this might be a good candidate to come back to uh, and, and try it. Cause it's pretty simple. It'd probably be easy to, to you know, convert it. I, I just, I haven't used React Native yet, so I just don't really know how much more difficult it would be. Sorry for the noise. I think my kids are throwing uh, things down the laundry chute. So <laughs> the laundry chute comes out right behind me. Uh, Saad so asks about being a complete web developer uh, as a beginner. Um, yeah, I would you know, start out with HTML and CSS, uh, then JavaScript. And, you know, Free Code Camp's course is really good. Uh, you could try um, uh, Free Code Academy. No, that's not what it is. It's just Code Academy. Learn Code Academy is a video series. All right, but I would say start out with. Um, uh, with free code camp and that's I mean that's a really good place to start out dead zombie asks as a beginner front end dev what should I learn first I already have a great knowledge of HTML and CSS I'm learning JS at the moment so any opinions Um, I don't know. I mean, I would say if you're already learning JavaScript, it kind of depends on exactly what kind of stuff you want to work on. But, um, sorry, that's my, I'm sure you all can hear that. My three-year-old is just like making a lot of noise right now, so... Uh, so I'm not sure why. He's... Hey, hey guys. I'm... Okay, I'm on YouTube right now, so I need you all to be a little bit more quiet, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> uh... Hey, that doesn't sound quiet to me. So um, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, as a beginner, like if you're already good with HTML, CSS, yes, you're into JS. Um, I I kind of think learning React is is a good way. I mean, I know I'm I'm using React already, so maybe I'm a little bit biased towards it. But for me, I've I've learned so much more about just vanilla JavaScript by learning React. Than, than I ever had before. Also, I will say, since I started doing the live streams, I've learned more than I ever had before from, you know, everything that you all share with me during the, the chat uh, and uh, from the pull requests and stuff that I get. So that that helps as well. Uh, but that's that's. I mean, if you're looking for you know somewhere to some goal, you know, because there's a lot of stuff you could learn. I would I would go that way. Uh, Hamza says, and, and Redux, have you done a video with Redux? I haven't done a video with Redux yet. I don't really know a lot about Redux, so maybe it's coming. I think Redux, I think I will also learn Redux in the course that I'm taking. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that was on like the course outline. So uh, once I cover that, if I feel I need to work that into a project, then I will and we can cover that as well. Um, Siraj asks about Vue.js. I have not tried Vue.js yet. I've just kind of heard a little bit about it. I uh, haven't used it yet. 
I might use it at some point, uh, but I don't really have a plan to use it uh, right now. Uh, so I'd ask, do you uh, use PHP and HTML in your project? In this project, yeah, I mean, I use HTML. I mean, I pretty much use HTML in every project. Uh, in this particular project, I'm not using PHP. In the last project that, that we did and that I streamed, I did use PHP. I made a, a custom WordPress plugin for that project. So, um, so occasionally I have used it on some of my projects, but I won't be on this particular project. I might use it again on a future project, though. Uh, Enix Core says, and I'm late again. Good day, everyone. Well, glad you could join us for, for the end here. You can always catch the recording. Uh, Blake asks, or Blake says, I've been using Atom Text Editor and it's been really laggy. I haven't messed with, at, with it at all, so there's nothing extra. Any ideas to speed it up? Hmm. I, you know what? I don't really know. I guess if um, if you haven't really added anything to it and it's still like that, I don't know of ways to make it faster. There may be some ways out there. Um, Sebastian recommends uh, Visual Studio Code, and I would probably give you the same thing. I Visual Studio Code seems to be way faster than Atom from my experience, but I wasn't comparing fresh installs of each one. So... I, d I didn't know exactly because my Atom has so many plugins and things. So I'm not 100% sure, you know, just how much faster they are, but I have noticed a definite speed difference. And uh, Visual Studio Code is very similar to Atom, it's free, uh, it's developed by Microsoft. Um, so I've been, I've been pretty impressed with it so far. You can actually set Visual Studio Code to use the same key bindings that Adam does. So if you're used to those, you can switch over and just go in the settings in uh, VS Code, set it to your Atom key bindings, and then you won't even have to learn any new, um, any new shortcuts, uh, you know, on your keyboard. So that was pretty convenient. Jana says, all right, so in, in regard to, um, I think I got to the point in the chat where I was talking about not sleeping. Uh, Zana says, um, working in the garden uh, really helps. It improved my sleep a lot. Yeah, I'll have, you know what, that makes a lot of sense because um, I used to have a better routine of like doing workouts. And since I was doing so much work you know so much coding recently i just that that kind of got pushed to the side so there's just you know obviously there's not enough time in the day so something had to be cut out for me to be able to work that much and that's what got cut out so probably like you know i sit around all day and i code and mentally i'm getting fatigued but my body's getting nothing so uh yeah maybe i need to do some something physical Daniel says, get flux for your computer. The blue light from your computer keeps you awake. It lowers serotonin levels. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. I have flux installed on my PC, but I don't have anything like that on my Mac. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll have to do that. I do have my phone set to switch uh, when it gets late. But, you know, it actually, and the, the nights when it's been hardest to sleep, I've been up late uh, building my um my app for the the course that i'm taking so that makes a lot of sense maxime says meditate to sleep better yeah actually that helps i mean i'm uh i'm catholic so uh sometimes i'll like pray the rosary which is somewhat of a type of meditation and that usually helps me go to sleep uh sarah says Yep, I use melatonin. Yeah, actually, I have tried melatonin before. Uh, I'll have to use that if I really can't sleep. I don't like to use it a lot because it doesn't leave me really groggy, but it's definitely like I can tell the difference to when I, I take melatonin when I differ, when I don't in terms of like how rested I feel. 
so it's not as bad as like you know a, a sleeping pill um, but I don't like to use it too much but yeah occasionally my kids <laughs> give my kids melatonin uh, they actually really like it <laughs> they ask for melatonin all the time so I don't always give it to them but <laughs> they, they like that they be able to fall asleep quickly uh, Saad says, uh, Jesse, understand coding, and when we make some mistake in our code, I was stuck sometimes. All the night I was doing free code camp practice, till it really makes me strong in HTML, CSS, and I moved into JavaScript. Um, cool. Yeah, it's good. Once you get into the JavaScript part of free code camp, it does get a lot harder. Um, so there will be some times where you know you got to spend a lot of time on some of the algorithms and things but you know keep working at it you know you'll get there sometimes you gotta look, take a little break and then you know when you come back to it the solution seems like it's it's just a lot more obvious Uh, John says, John Hansen says, will those JS files and views become separate HTML uh, final public web page files? Okay, so what's going to happen here is all these files here in views, we'll put in these routes. So instead of the H1 tag, we'll just have a tag, you know, based on that component. So it'll just say like glossary, right? Or in this case, it'll be home. So it'll be home.js here. So we'll render home.js, and there'll be a separate file. So we'll go into the home.js file, and here's where we'll put all our markup for that page. And then it'll render, to the user, it will seem like a separate page. It'll have a different URL, but in reality, it's not entirely a separate page because we're not rendering the whole screen. So there's still this whole menu system and nav at the top that will stay the same and never have to re-render. Uh, so it's kind of nicer, like it definitely keeps the appearance of separate pages, but it's not really a whole page, which is why I call them views instead of page. It's not like I made up the term. It's, well, everybody uses the term views, I guess, but uh, I think it's more accurate to say a view than a page because it's not traditionally a page like it's normally as in sending a request to the server and getting an entire page back. So anyway, let me know, John, if that uh, answered your question or not. Xana says, Lo love and infusion, if you can accept the taste, one teaspoon of dry love and in a glass of water, you put it in the morning and leave it till evening you drink it before going to sleep I've never heard about that that's really interesting alright so sorry I can't pronounce someone is asking a question here and the uh, the characters are not the normal alphabet that I'm used to so I can't pronounce that I'm sorry um, I guess it's it's Russian uh, it says, why why does people prefer Create React app if you can't even configure Webpack or something similar for your own needs? You just have to follow React Script's workflow. Yeah, so Create React app is just really nice to get started if you just want to start working on something because you can get started in just a you know a few minutes and have something that works. So you do sacrifice customization for that. So it's just a trade-off that sometimes makes sense and sometimes doesn't. For this particular project, uh, we may not have to do any customizations, so it should work. Uh, but for some projects, you would need to. So it just depends on what you're doing. So if you don't need to customize, this saves you a lot of time. You can also eject this and then do all the customizations that you want. So it's good to start. It's nice you can start a project like this, and if the project ends up becoming more complicated than you thought it would be and you need to customize, you can always do that later on. Uh, 
uh, Nathaniel says, will the video replay be in full HD or still blurry? Actually, the video replay will still be in uh, lower quality, which really stinks. That's I that's why I really don't like to have to do streams from home. Uh, I maybe could record the video while I'm streaming it with OBS and then upload it later. That would be a huge file size, though. I'll have to think about that and see, because I'm pretty sure you can do that with OBS. So what would happen, I guess, is that I would actually just maybe take down the video for the stream and then instead upload the video. That might work. I'll think about doing that next time. Assuming that I have enough space on my hard drive to handle of the huge file that ends up uh, being made from the stream. I'll have to keep the streams short, maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I didn't realize. So, uh, Mobbin had said something about using Pied Piper for something, and I didn't get the reference. And uh, Rahul says it's a it's a reference from a TV show, not an actual product. So, <laughs> thanks for letting me know. I would have tried to look it up. I I mean, I probably would have eventually figured out it was from a show, but thanks. They said it's from Silicon Valley TV show, so I've never seen that. I want to see it. Uh, I just haven't watched it yet. Oh, okay, cool. So uh, Patrick followed up about using SAS, uh, and it says it's it's in to it is about using it with Create React app. Cool. Awesome. I'll have to check that out. Thank you. Uh, Rish, Rishab asks, is there any way of using the CSS grid system just like Bootstrap? I don't, I don't know how I can make a React app responsive. Yeah, you, uh, you can use any uh, system you want, like any CSS system with React, you know, you just you just plug the CSS in, so it would work. Um, I'm actually gonna try to have a responsive grid with this site by using the newest version of Material UI. So uh, if you watch maybe some of the the episodes coming up this week, I'll probably try to get it working this week, and um, so it won't be with Bootstrap but it will be a grid system. Uh, Patrick asked about the shortcut to skip to the next instance of text uh, for multiple cursors. Um, I guess, was it Command D? Oh, to, to skip the next instance. I don't know the skip. I've never used the command to skip, but that would be really useful. <laughs> but I've never taken the time to learn it. I've always figured there, there was one. All right, Jordan says hi. Hey, Jordan, thanks for watching. Alfonso says hi. On my break at my coding boot camp. Cool. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. I hope everything's going well at at the coding boot camp. Also, Alfonso, how did you get your name to show up like that? That's really cool. So, I mean, any, you, anyone watching the video can't see this unless you're in the live chat, but Alfonso's name in the live, everybody else's name is all just the normal gray and the normal font. Alfonso has, like, a, wow, it says he's a moderator. Okay. Is that why you're a moderator? How did you get to be a moderator? Anyway, I <laughs> 
I was just amazed that he has a different color name. Uh, now I can I can I get I get to the part in the chat where um, where my kids were making all that noise. So. Thanks, thanks for being such good sports about it, everyone. <laughs> thanks, sir. <laughs> Uh, Xana says, my kids sound too cute. Thanks. They say, and Maxie is just so cute. Yeah, they're cute. They're really cute. That's, I think, um, the kids, like, it's really good that kids are so cute because if, like, if you have kids or been around kids before, you know, sometimes they're just crazy and they just do things that don't make any sense, but they're so cute. You don't stay super mad at them, right? Like... Otherwise, it would be really hard to take care of kids, but it makes it so much nicer that they're so cute. Like when I have to wake up really early in the morning with the baby, like she smiles at me and laughs and it's like, okay, I feel like I'm going to die because I'm so tired, but it's still fun because I get to, you know, I get to see her for a while before work. So, so that's cool. I think... <laughs> Like it's it's definitely the the cuteness has its its purpose. Oh, cool! Sebastian says uh, he has uh, nine year old twin brothers. So cool. <laughs> Santa says you should invite them over when you were at work too. Yeah, <laughs> they've they've come into where I work before and. Um, it usually is like the same thing. It's me saying, okay, let's try to be quiet. <laughs> uh, Vipul says, hello, everyone. Uh, hey, Vipul, thanks for joining us. Blake says, six brothers and sisters? Awesome. That's really cool. Oh, okay, so Morrow says, why not use switch and router, then don't use exact and route? Uh, well, why... I, I guess I could use that. The reason why is simply being I had no idea that Switch existed. So thanks for bringing that up. I'll have to check it out now. Like I said, uh, I said a little bit earlier, um, I just literally just learned how to use React Router a couple weeks ago, and I haven't worked with it very much, just in my side project for my course, which I don't get to work on very much. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff I'm sure about React Router that I don't even know is possible. So I'll have to check that out. Thank you for that. <laughs> Sebastian says, wow, Chrome eating on my RAM. Yeah, it does that occasionally, does Oh, okay. Nathaniel says you don't need to use Flux on Mac. So Flux was the thing that we were talking about that would automatically make you know, dim your screen and you know shift the light so that it would um, it wouldn't keep you awake at night as much. So evidently Mac has night shift built in, and so you can just uh, enable night shift. So oh, cool. That's good to know. I'll have to do that. Okay, Xana says, and this is uh, back to what we we're talking about with you know sleeping and you know getting good exercise, and so that I can be able to sleep. 
And uh, she says, uh, both me and my boyfriend are writing code. We have a big garden, and we make sure we work out as well. That's cool. Yeah, I, I think that is probably important. I usually never have trouble sleeping if I get a good, you know, workout in during the day. Although sometimes if I work out at night, it wakes me up and I can't go to sleep. So I have to make sure I get it in earlier in the day. If I work out in the morning, I actually am really awake right after the workout. So it's kind of nice. It's like better than, than coffee. Oh, okay, I see Hamza uh, mentioned night shift as well for Mac. Blake says, PC versus Mac for coding. Um, I don't know. I use both. Um, lately, I've been using a Mac a lot, so I'm, I'm kind of partial to a Mac for coding. PC is always going to win, I think, when it comes to gaming, but, <laughs> uh, but the Mac, it could just be that my Mac is just a better computer than my PC in terms of how much RAM it has and things, but uh, my Mac just seems so much faster than my PC and my PC has a desktop it has a decent amount of RAM and nice video card like it should run well uh, but it just doesn't compete with with the Mac it seems like I click something on my Mac and it immediately happens on the PC like I have to wait for everything so maybe if I had a PC with with enough RAM you know maybe it would be better uh, but I don't know. I like I I like using the Mac now. I don't like that they cost so much money, but uh, I do like that they they function really well. Well, Sebastian said just saw an article claiming that Firefox uh, version fifty six can open about sixteen hundred tabs in fifteen seconds. That's amazing. I mean, why would you want to do that? But that is amazing. Well, wow, Nathaniel says melatonin gave gave him a ton of vivid nightmares. That's it's never happened to me when I've taken melatonin. That's crazy. I didn't even know you could have uh, an, a reaction like that to melatonin. Oh, Blake says the newest Windows 10 update has a nightlight setting. Okay, cool. Uh, Salgut says hi. Hey, thanks for joining us. <laughs> Nathaniel says upload the video at work. So if I were to record the video here, just upload it at work, Lisa Network. Actually, I might have to do that. Um, I might hit my data cap at home if I try to upload too many things. Uh, Maxime says, it's getting late in France. I'm leaving. Thanks for the stream. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around, uh, sort of, you know, even though it was so late. Uh, John Hansen says, thanks, Jesse. Um, I set up something different where my entry point is an array and the output goes to a resolved directory file uh, bundle. I did not have separate CSS and JS for each page. Okay. Uh, my React built into webpack has no errors on build everything compiles but for some reason the javascript or react code is not running not even a simple console log uh john if you um i'd be happy to take a look and and see if you have it on github or something uh just you know send me the link like it on uh you know you could direct message me on twitter or something and uh i might not get a chance to look at it right away but i'll, I'll you know try to look at it when i can uh, Jordan says there there are nine kids in my family. That's awesome. Big families are really cool because I think like, you know, you wouldn't get bored. I mean, nine kids, that's a whole baseball team. You could literally have a baseball team that's just your family. That's really cool.
Uh, James says, agree on uh, the Mac is better, but the PC is good uh, for gaming. Yeah, that's true. That I, Honestly, all I use my PC for anymore is gaming. I don't game that much, but I just bought my son, uh, my eight-year-old, I, I bought him Minecraft for his birthday. So he's been using my PC that used to be what I developed on, and now he's been using it for Minecraft. Which, that game's really cool. I never played it before. And uh, it's super addictive, so I need to like watch out so I don't play Minecraft all day and not get anything done. Uh, Nathaniel says, Benadryl is good for sleeping. Take two of them, you fall asleep so fast. Yeah, you definitely do. But if I take Benadryl and fall asleep, I feel so tired the next morning. Oh, cool. Patrick says, Command K, uh, Command D skips the next section, I think. Cool. I'll have to try that. Let's try it right now. <laughs> All right, so let's say Command K, D. Cool. Haha, <laughs> check that out. Look, it skipped that. So I skipped these two sections and then skipped down to skip this one, and kept going. That's awesome. Okay, one says same uh, one works works in Ubuntu, Ubuntu, but then uh, uses Windows for gaming. Uh, Hamza said, in Pakistan, they make fun of people who have a lot of kids and not a lot of time. Uh, yeah, in the in the United States, actually, um, it's it's weird. Like, uh, big families sometimes get, uh, like, a lot of, like, negativity. People, I don't know why, people get freaked out by big families. Uh, I'm in a unique place uh, where I live uh, in, in Steubenville, Ohio, in the United States, there's actually a lot of big families, like way more than in most parts of the country. So it's not really like I have a family of four and a lot of places, a family of four is seen as a uh, above average size family. But around here, it's not seen as a big family at all because, uh, you know, but my, my children's friends uh, from school, they have six, seven, eight. There are some families that have 12 kids. Uh, so like six kids would be more of an average size family around here. Like eight is getting kind of big. And then above that is a big family. So it's kind of a weird, a weird spot. I'm sure it's different in different, different parts of the world. Uh, but yeah. Um, I always said, uh, when people ask me how many kids I wanted to have, I would say, I'd like to have a football team, but I'll settle for a baseball team. <laughs> And uh, they always looked at me like I was crazy. I thought it was funny, but they, they thought I was nuts. Uh, James says, uh, in Utah, there are a lot of big families as well. Cool. Yeah, like I said, I, I like big families. I think that's, that's cool. All right. I think I'm going to wrap it up. The stream's going on. Oh, yeah, it's it's almost four. I definitely, I have to wrap it up because I have to take my son. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap up the stream. I got through all of the, uh, the live chat, so I think I covered everybody's questions. If not, just send them to me on Twitter. Put them in the comments in the video. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that the network will be stable tomorrow and I can stream from work. And um, I don't think I have anything going on, so it should be the same time. But I'll schedule the stream as early as I can, and I'll, I'll post on Twitter as well to let you all know ahead of time when I'll be streaming. And um, thank you so much uh, for watching and for helping me out in the live chat. Uh, and I'll, um, I'll see you all tomorrow.